Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and I will be exceptionally brief because I think I understand exactly what it is I'm seeing in Leica's just announced M11 monochrome. Although, before I do, a quick favor, if you don't mind. Please vote for our Webby-nominated YouTube series, The Art of Street Photography, produced with B&H, in this year's People's Voice Awards put on by the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences, no less an authority than the New York Times, called the Webbies the Internet's highest honor. I'll put a link to it in the description down below, and thank you. When you come right down to it, like is M11 monochrome, can pretty much be reduced to this. One, remove the bare color filter array from the original M11's 60 megapixel sensor. Two, Deposit it into an M11 body that has been given the classic monochrome treatment. Three. Top it all off with a dollop of destiny courtesy of an updated classic Leica lens also just announced the manual focus only 50 mm f1.4 sumalux m aspherical four hold it up to your eye and finally five wow in a world where too often choices are infinite yet inconsequential too many choices are appallingly finite unpalatable and enormously consequential the number of colors is measured in billions yet too many people cannot see the one thing plainly before them. The signal to noise ratio of our politics and the news approaches zero. And the era of machines doing practically everything for us, including thinking, is already upon us. You have, for a moment at any rate, left all of that behind to enter the monochrome zone. Call it a meditative place, a contemplative device, the ultimate distillation in glass and metal of a core component in Leica's DNA, das Wesentliche, the essentials. Or maybe it's just escapism, pure and simple. I can go there. Either there. Of course, the M11 monochrome is not for everyone. It isn't for most people. The price alone, $9,195 for the body, another $44.95 or $47.95 respectively for the new 50 Sumalux M in black or silver, takes care of that. In fact, the monochrome M11 will only make sense to a very few people within the very small category of those who can afford it, fewer still who are already or have the ambition to become. Like a shooters. I mean, no autofocus, no IBIS, no integrated EVF, no articulating rear screen, no dual card slots. Of course, no color, no color channel information to aid in 
editing. No AI. This is another conversation altogether. Don't get me started. On top of all that, as a black and white shooter myself, I can tell you, you do not need a monochrome sensor to get spectacular black and white imagery from the original M11, which I happen to own. One could assert that the M11 monochrome is nothing more really than an invitation to see the world differently, capture the world differently, inspired by the limitations of the M11 monochrome, because limitations are the basis for creativity. I can go there too especially because the very conception of what those limitations might be is a very personal thing. I think this is why the M11 monochrome will, for some of us, become more than a camera, more than an M11 variant, but instead a talisman, a companion, a portal to past, present, and future in a way a regular M11 will not. Then again, for some of us, it will be as simple as this. Debayering the sensor really does create a rendering all its own to my way of seeing more nuanced with greater tonal range, very much like the difference between 35 millimeter and 120 film. And it does yield sharper images, all else being equal, with less noise at higher ISOs. That's a fact. I won't spend much time on further details because you can read them on your own. And if you are already familiar with them, I encourage you to skip ahead to my musings on the new Sumalux M51.4. I'll put a link to the time down in the show notes below. I'll probably post it up here and edit. Then again, it is not all that complicated either. As I said at the outset, it's essentially a deep aired M11 with that wonderful, I'm Batman, look. And that means compared to the M10 monochrome, half again as many megapixels, a higher resolution rear panel, compatibility with the VisoFlex 2 at full resolution, more sophisticated metering, a bigger battery, more efficient circuitry, a USB-C port for power delivery and data transfer, significantly lower weight, The elimination of the classic base plate to allow for SD card and battery removal, even with the optional hand grip in place, which, by the way, I much prefer now. The ability to use the rear scroll wheel for instant, essentially zero inertial drag manual ISO changes, which, believe it or not, is a big deal to those of us who insist on manually setting the exposure triangle. And finally, a dedicated USB-C to lightning cable coupled to significant performance updates to Leica's Photos app, making it possible to travel lighter than ever before while still allowing tremendous editing flexibility in near real time. But beyond the original M11, there's also this. The M11 monochrome comes with four times the 64 gigabytes of permanent internal storage of the original M11, a total of 256 gigabytes. Perfect for someone like me who not only hates futzing, but has a propensity for misplacing or losing things that can't be attached to me like idiot mittens. A man has to know his limitations. A few quick thoughts on the new Sumalux M51.4, because I think it is a fascinating example of how difficult the stewardship of the most famous camera system in history can be. I say this because Leica could have gone in a profoundly different direction than the one the company chose for this update. Leica could have opted for near APO Summicron levels of resolution and chromatic aberration control across the entire frame. The company could have included electrical contacts to allow for accurate and complete EXIF data to be communicated to the body. I would have really liked that. But these things would have meant 
bigger, heavier, more complicated, more expensive, and perhaps most important to many of us, a rendering fundamentally different from its legendary forebear. Instead, Leica's objective was clearly to improve the lens in practical ways while retaining the, call it, romance of the Lux, calculated with a clear-eyed precision for what the aesthetic demands of this lens would actually be wide open. I love that this is what drove the design team. Thus, this new Sumalux M51.4 comes with an integrated lens hood, perfect for me since I tend to lose anything that isn't nailed down, an increase in the number of aperture blades to 11, nicer bokeh, I guess, but you know me in bokeh, and a decrease in the minimum focusing distance to 45 centimeters, although at that point, one must rely on the rear screen for critical focus, but many people will appreciate that. I shot with the M11 monochrome all too briefly on the streets of New York with the current 50 Lux, and it is just what you'd expect. Creamier than my fifth generation, non-aspherical Summicron M50. Heavier than my Cron too, although I shot with the silver version, which uses a brass barrel versus the aluminum barrel of the black version. But easier to focus, at F2 anyway, due to the Lux's small focus tab. Of all the images from that afternoon, this is the one that makes the point, an image that just knocks my socks off, a perfectly imperfect shot of a young woman named Leia, who we met by happenstance on the streets of the greatest city on earth, for street photography, in my humble opinion. That's it for now, because it really is this simple. The M11 monochrome is a breathtaking camera for those of us who see it that way a significant upgrade to the M10 monochrome and made it to the 50mm f1.4 Sumalux, for me anyway. A joy. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. <laughs>